Hello and welcome to the overview of Kerbal Space Program version 0.22, the most recent update of the game, which arguably provides us with the biggest updating content that we've seen for a very, very long time. And that's in the form of career mode, which is comprised of research and development, the big update. Research and development, it's amazing, it gives you direction to your game without creating any sort of linearity that would detract from the sandbox experience. The self-set goals that you've always had now give you tangible rewards for completing them. And how does it work? Well, the tech tree itself, you progress through very, very basic parts, starting out with one pod, one solid booster, one small tank, one liquid engine and a parachute, and an antenna, which is important, and progressing through different things, getting a goo experiment straight away, which is also important, and then higher tier ones will give you launch lamps and tricouplers, sensors, jet engines, RCS jets, and rover wheels. Goo experiment. How does that work exactly? What's it for? Science is how you unlock different tiers of the tech tree, and this is done via crew reports, experiments, and sampling. Now, if we were to look at this glue or this goo in different situations, for, for example this takeoff right now, we get some scientific data for it. We get a choice as well, to keep the data, to delete the data, or to transmit the data, which we'll come on to in a second. We can do this in different situations, as I've just said, such as launching in orbit. The goo seems to be getting very cold now. We can do it on the surface of the moon. Well, we can do it still on the surface of the moon, despite the fact that we've crashed. And we can also reset the canister, so you can use them the same one over and over again. Observing the go on the moon tells us it seems to be less dense, and each of these observations give us scientific value. Making the same observation in the same place will give you less scientific value every time you do it, so iterations of the same experiments give you less insight in the future which is a really great way of handling the currency system. Uh, as I've said, you can take surface samples, so the sample appears to comprise of large number of materials laid over time. This is worth 120 currency. Now, it may not realistically be worth that update and somehow you turn moon dust into rocket engines, but the fact that you've landed on the moon, it's a great way of measuring that achievement. However, you have to actually get the data back to Kerbin for use. Now, you can either do this by keeping the data and sending your command pod, safely landing it back on Kerbin, or you can transmit the data with a few disadvantages. Transmitting, yes, it's very easy, you can do it from anywhere in the solar system, but it requires a lot of power, and it also has a percentage loss chance. Some data has a percentage yield of 100%, which means you don't lose any. Other have a percentage yield of 40%, which means if you had 10 scientific data, you'd only be able to send 4 back. The other way of doing things is to return the command pod intact, recover it at the tracking station, and get all your science back. So it's a bit of a gamble, because of course, sending the crew, man uh, sending the crew module back to Kerbin is going to take a lot more fuel and is going to be quite risky in some circumstances. If you perform an experiment and and are not able to transmit it or send it back to Kerbin, you won't get the points for doing it. So, what else happens? Well, this is the tech tree. You can spend your science here and unlock different layers, unlocking different branches of the parts. Uh, next one up I need to get is electricity, because you don't actually have any power generation to start out with. So, transmitting really isn't particularly viable. But, hey, it's all, it's all for the good and such like. And, uh... There's a ladder there, different type of landing legs, which have been updated by the way, some landing legs have been updated. Uh, but we'll get onto that in a second. The Space Center! The Space Center has been up, uh, improved, up, updated, upgraded in every single way. The R&D development side of things is not just a tech tree, it is in fact a massive complex of buildings. There's stairways and arches and all sorts of different things running around the place, little vehicles parked in corners, big gas tanks, small gas tanks, big observation domes, roads, hairpin bends around those roads. I tell you, the roads are brilliant. I like the roads almost as much as I like the buildings, just because you can drive a buggy round and flip it around and do big jumps and things and drive through little archways just like that. 
Yes, the research and development site itself is actually a great source of content, believe it or not. Being stuck on the ground in a space game is actually a great way to get things, uh, to spend your time in the game. But it's not the only way. Building rockets is another way to spend your time. And this has been improved with sub-assembly, which previously was a mod. Sub-assembly, you can take parts of your ship, name them and give them a description, and drop them to the side in this new tab on the VAB and space plane hangar... Uh, facilities. So if you're building a ship at any time you can just whack out a lander that you saved previously and stick it straight on there without having to rebuild it. Sounds a bit simple for a lander but bearing in mind that you can also do this with entire launch stages. So you can imagine just how useful this is going to be in the future. Other things include new parts, landing legs have been entirely rewritten, we have now got piston suspension on them, the feet orient themselves automatically to point at the ground, and they can be damaged and repaired if handled incorrectly, just like rover wheels. The avionics package, which was a bit useless, now is an atmospheric analysis machine called a sensor array computing nose cone, which sounds really awesome. It can collect atmospheric data in flight, not just on Kerbin, it can do it on other planets as well, in return for scientific value. A science module which similarly gives you scientific value when you conduct experiments in different situations. The mystery goo has been added as a lesser form of that same observation method. There's a new antenna and a new com dish. And in terms of parts, that's all there is, but this has provided a meaty update to the game. Version 0.22, ladies and gentlemen, a really, really great addition to the entire thing. My personal opinion, I'm going to be playing career mode a lot. Because it is so fun, having the restriction in parts that I've been so used to going without really does help. For instance, struts. You unlock struts after nuclear rockets. Sounds silly, but it actually makes a lot of sense because struts will make your rockets so much better. Anyway, that's enough of me talking about the game itself. If you want to see more videos of this incredible update, I will be posting them on this channel. Thank you very much for watching, I hope this overview was sufficient for you, and I shall see you all in the next video.